Uncle Martin Luther King used to frequent here a lot. When you say the word ancestors, it just it chills a little bit. Atlanta is the place to be. What's up, best friends? Y'all know it's your boy Kendall Kendall, AKA best friend. Now y'all probably wonder why he walking down the street. Have y'all heard of the Green Book? The Green Book is a book that black people carried around so they can know where it was safe to travel during segregation. What I'm doing is taking you on a journey, a journey of a new green book, my green book. And guess where I'm starting? Right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, baby, it's going to be lit. We talking food. Good food to make you dance, baby. Culture. Now women began wearing their kinks. Everything black, black businesses. I'm making beer. Black people. They called her boss lady. Like, okay. before there was a boss lady, there uh -huh. was a boss lady. My fine black ass, A-Town. A-Town. Come on, let's go. Atlanta has some of the most successful black people in the world. Now y'all know we can't do Atlanta without stopping at the birth home of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Everyone knows that Dr. King wanted freedom for all, but he also spoke of black economic freedom. We must see now that the evils of racism, economic exploitation, and militarism are all tied together. You can't get rid of one without getting rid of the other. That's why I'm here, to see how far we've come since the beginning of the Green Book era. Right here on Auburn Avenue, which was named one of the richest black streets in America. Because like Dr. King said, the problems of racial injustice and economic injustice cannot be solved without a radical redistribution of political and economic power. So thank you, Dr. King, for paving the way. All right, come with me. Let's get this show on the road. I have pulled up to the Busy Bee now. This restaurant has been around for a long time. It's in the original Green Book. Founded by Lucy Jackson in 1947, the Busy Bee Cafe provided a safe space for activists to strategize and organize right here in Atlanta University Center. Atlanta is arguably known as the epicenter for the civil rights movement. The Busy Bee Cafe provided support for the movement, and today it has been recognized by the culinary arts organization, the James Beard Foundation. I'm gonna put it in my green book today. Hey, hey! How's it going? You better give me that old All southern right welcome. Now. Welcome in. Listen, welcome in. This is not only in the original green book. Guess what? My uncle, your uncle, our uncle, Martin Luther King used to eat here. Oprah and came here, Vice President Kamala Harris. People be pulling up. I'm here. Why well, I can't go in the inside? I want to sit down and eat. Well, we would love to serve you inside, but since the beginning of the pandemic, we've been closed. So I get my food and go? Yes, yes. First of all, I got to get this award-winning chicken. Put that on there. I heard y'all got fried okra. Is it good? It's really good. Throw that on there. Mac and well, cheese? Uh-huh. Carrot souffle? Is it like yams? I accidentally ate it one day, and I have not eaten yams since. Really? Yes! <laughs> Throw yes. that on there. And what's the name on your order? Let's put it down as best friend. All right, best friend. Yeah. How long that's gonna take? Um, give us about 20 minutes, okay? Tw 20? Y'all can't do it in 10. Cause we gotta get the chicken fried. <sighs> okay. It's gonna be worth it. I'm about to go watch YouTube. <sighs> she said 20 minutes. I think it's been 22. I think I'm hungry. I bet you they didn't make Martin Luther King. Well, I know they didn't. I ain't even gotta bet. I know. I'm his nephew. Best friend is ready! Since 1947, y'all been busy as hell around here. Why is that? Love and soul. Everything is fresh, fresh ingredients. OK. Locally. Uncle Martin Luther King used to frequent here a lot, right? Yes, this is the meeting place for Martin Luther King, Ralph David Abernathy, Avery Young. Why do you think they picked Busy Bee? Well, for one, it's a neighborhood restaurant. It's a black community, and everybody knows one another. Mm -hmm. So this is the meeting place. Now I have to know, who's responsible for the fried chicken here? <laughs> <laughs> Ingredients were passed down from generations, so it's an ancient soul food secret. You know the secret? No, I do not. How long you been working here? I've been here over 25 years. She owned the plate. I know you got some stock in this. <laughs> I'm gonna be back, because she gonna teach me how to fry this chicken. <laughs> 25 years? But again, I'm about to eat. Um, y'all don't like people standing at y'all when y'all eat, do y'all? I'm about to go. This is getting weird. Dang! It's cameras in the car, too? I guess y'all can eat with me. Now, this is what I'm excited about, this fried okra. Ooh, I love me some fried okra. A1. Oh, this is a seafood platter. Let's see if these shrimp busting. That 
tell you, like my granddaddy. My granddaddy back there in the kitchen. I knew they don't want to give me the they don't want to give me the recipe. That's my granddaddy back there cooking. That's my, that's my granddaddy. That's some good shit. The moment I've been waiting for. The fried chicken, the carrot souffle, the mac and cheese. Wait a minute. Them carrots? I don't want no carrots no other way. Don't give me no steamed carrots. I want mine souffle, OK? The mac is macking. The mac is macking. Let me try this fried chicken. I told you, if it don't crunch, I ain't going to munch. Mmm. This chicken busting, though. It's crunching. Can somebody give me some hot sauce? All right. We got to get out of here. We got places to go. Hey, damn! Let me try this lemonade. What's this, Arnold Palmer? Baby, everything here good. I got to go. I got to finish my food. We got to get to the next spot. I'm going to see y'all in a minute. Why do you think Atlanta is so big when it comes to black businesses? Well, historically, this has been an epicenter for black wealth. Like, Henderson Street used to, was the first millionaire's row. I believe it was, like, black barbershops. Mm -hmm. And so, historically, it's been a black city, black wealth, and it's been safe for African Americans. You can go to places and feel safe. Mm -hmm. You don't have to question your blackness. You don't have to uh, feel weird about your blackness. It's a place where you're allowed to grow and not feel weird about growing, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, black. yeah, 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 you know what I mean? Y'all ready for this part of my green book? <laughs> I bet y'all ain't know black people do this. Whoa! What's up, boss? What's up, brother? It look like you about to put me to work. Yeah, you ready to make some beer? We making beer. Y'all, I am at Hip and Hops, the first black-owned brewery in Georgia. You know I had to put it in my green book. This spot has two locations in the heart of Atlanta and a factory in Stone Mountain where the largest Confederate landmarks still exist. In 1915, the KKK resurfaced here and lasted for 50 years. Today, its presence is still a topic and discussion in this community. All right, so back in the green book era, this town was KKK territory. Right. Fast forward, you as a black man, you said, Boom! Right, right, right. I'm throwing this black owned brewery right here in the middle of this town. How do you feel and what was going through your head? This area has changed dramatically over the last 15 years. So it's good to bring a black owned business to this neighborhood to create a hospitality for folks that live in this community. The beer industry is making like what, 100 billion a year? Yeah, somewhere, somewhere. And only 1%. Yep. Yep, yep. Black home. I'll drink the beer. I, I'll drink the beer for $100 million. <laughs> I'm ready to make you some ready? beer. I'm ready. This is our mash tun. This is where we actually extract the sugars out of the uh, malt. OK. And then we move it over here to the kettle. It's boiling now. I'm going to get you to throw in some hops. You want to pick that bag up? It's like my dog food. Yeah, there you go. So about how many bags do you have to put in here to really fill this uh, up? Four bags in there. We I'm about to put four. Yeah, here you want another one? There you go. I'm making beer. Why do you think black people don't like to drink beer? They came out with something called tequila. <laughs> <laughs> the whole bag. Yep. Hey, yo, quick. They calling you to work. <laughs> Y'all got it. <laughs> Sweet. What's up? You want to help me out here a little bit? Uh, not today, brother. You know what I'm saying? You, you got it. Y'all just going to watch me? No, no we, want you, we want you to learn how to do the beer, brother. Anything for black-owned businesses. All right, I'm going to see y'all in a minute. I got to go, <laughs> go back to work. Who does that? Put them in there. Make sure they're not dented. All right. And then from there, they go right onto the machine right there. OK, OK. Yep, so right on top, inside I there. got a six-pack. Yep. All right, here we go, here we go. OK, go. what's Clarence going to be doing? So he has to keep adjusting these to make sure the beer is in the cans the right amount. Because I got sweets over there working. I got Q. And I got Clarence right here. Guess who ain't working no more? Me. Got you working too. You have to make sure the cans don't fall over right now. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. Woo! We packing beers, baby. So what is this beer called? It's called Real One. It's made to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. If you look at it, you got black, white, you know, gay, straight, everybody, we are one. So cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, wow. That's a good beer. Not that's bad. Good. That's, that's good. a good, good job, beer. Buddy. Good, good job. I did that. Good job. You did, did this. 
So what you think, guys? You think he ready? Yeah. 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 All right, all right, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Come on, man. Put yeah, this on. Right. You tried it. Because you think I'm going to be up in here tonight. You got a next day coming. Well, well Kendall, we glad you got that on. Be at work at 9 a.m. Uh, nine? 9? 9 in the morning. <laughs> Have you ever met somebody that quit before they started? Because I bet you I won't be up in here. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I have a question for you right, right. quick. Do you know what this book is? Uh, I've heard of this book, but I've never read this book. You never read it? No, no. Oh, look. Flip through it. No. Read it a little bit. I should probably know. I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> Grab it, touch it, feel it, read it. Yeah, you probably don't know what it is. Give me the damn book. <laughs> what is it? So Tell back the in the day, it used to be really unsafe for African Americans to travel throughout the U.S. So they created the Green Book, a place of like safe hotels, cities, restaurants that you can go to to get service. <laughs> yes! 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 Give it to me! Now y'all know you cannot come to Atlanta without talking about hair. Now, the 1930s was the beginning of the hair revolution. From braids to relaxers to kinks and curls, black women have taken their hair seriously for centuries. Today, natural hair care is a billion dollar industry that was kicked off by our girl, Madam C.J. Walker. So, I came here to Runway Curls Boutique to talk to my girl, Mushia. So I know she in here somewhere. I think I found it. My friends. <laughs> I've been looking all over for you. <laughs> I'm here. So you got cocktails? <laughs> yes, I do. You know I'm the king of cocktails, like you the queen of natural hair. Cocktail? Oh, OK. Oh, look at this. <laughs> That's how you do it? Oh, I'm going to have to come That's here it. all the time. That's it. Um, drop top Rolls Royce. Just give it a moment. Way back in our day. Yes. You know, hair was very hard to maintain, but now mm. hair styling has really evolved. Now, women began wearing their kinks. So now, I want to look like my mother mm -hmm. and my daughter. I want to look like my the, ancestors. I want to wear the hair that grows out of my skull. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to wear extensions, then let's accentuate the very thing that makes the black woman beautiful. You understand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I want to introduce you to our client, which is a very, very, very special client, OK? okay. So Ashika. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and then you bite, then you bite. Today is actually one of the first times she's going to be talking about her and showing her alopecia. Oh. I'm anxious and I just don't want to be scared anymore. So it's for me, it's all about ascension and it's all about being fearless, mm -hmm. no matter what's going on. I just keep in mind that really, we are not our hair. Note that I'm recovering from alopecia because of the wigs. I just because want to note of, that. Because okay. of the wigs, yes. A lot of women are going through this, OK? You had less hair than this before? Yeah, I had way less hair than this before. How you moisturize the hair is important. And then the protective style, and you've heard that term many times, the protective style that you do is going to be important. So in this case, our protective style is actually going to be this wig. So usually on the lace front. Uh -huh. You see where they, they'll make like, baby where they hairs. do the baby hairs. The Here, I see it's more like. Baby naps. Oh, hey! got it. <laughs> OK, so this is baby naps baby instead nap. of baby hair. So what made you want to take natural hair and make this your empire? We as black women are just so gorgeous and so versatile. I love our own natural hair, but I also don't mind accentuating our hair with extensions. But if we're going to wear extensions, let's wear extensions that resemble like the hairs of our children and of our mothers, and that still celebrate who we are as black women. All right, best friends. I just whipped our hair up right quick, so I need to know, are y'all ready? Ooh. This is amazing. What you think? It made me say, damn. This is definitely going down in my green book. I love the way that you educate on black hair for not only women, but also men as well. Yes. All I right. got to get out of here. I got to get to the next spot. Pleasure All to right. see you, my baby. Let's go. How do you feel about generational wealth? Oh, man, that's something I actually been talking about, man. I think it's very important. Especially for us, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of us don't have it. A lot of us got to, like, obtain it from, you know, somebody else that's not family and then pass it on. Yeah. 
Did you know that black-owned businesses helped save the civil rights movement? Let's think about it. Rosa Parks, the bus boycott. Within 24 hours of Rosa Parks being arrested, black business owners had a meeting of the minds and agreed on alternate transportation for protesters. That was 18 companies operating 210 cabs. You do the math. And fast forward to today, black car services are still thriving right here in Atlanta. Like the car I'm in right now, provided by Milani Exotic Cars, who is no stranger to helping the stars, like myself. What's up, best friends? Y'all already know it's nighttime, so we gotta hit that nightlife in my green book. Let's not get it twisted. Civil rights leaders and everyday black people found black joy when black joy was outlawed. The 1930s was a lively time for black dance in America. And in 1935, when Georgia lifted its ban on alcohol, Atlanta became the nightlife hotspot of the South. We had one of my favorite places, Sovereign Suites, black generational wealth. The family I'm about to meet is a family of business who knows a thing or two about black leisure. So the Green Book is places right here in America that was safe for black people to go during the segregation times. So I have to ask, why Atlanta? My mom had relocated and came here for a job. I came here and I just fell in love with it. Out of all the cities in the United States, Atlanta is the place sure. where you There's been a black mayor here ever since I can remember. Right. We have a voice here. We're heard, we're, we're doing business. It's a good place to see black people move to the next level. Why not create businesses here in Atlanta? Why not celebrate that black joy, right? Why not be a part of the new Green Book? I've heard about Sovereign Suites before I got here. And I saw on social media, I saw Tamar, I saw the stars, I saw T.I., everybody coming here. I really wanted to create an environment in which take a sip, put your phone down, let's get back to the days where we actually enjoyed communicating with one another effectively. And the desserts are just really the sweet on top. You guys own a lot of businesses in Atlanta. First, we have Sovereign Suites, of course. Okay. I am one of the owners of the James Rooms. I actually have my interior design firm, Contemporary Essential. We have multiple trucking companies. Yeah. We have a dispatch company. Kel and I both sell real estate. We have a tobacco company. Ashley, she's our writer of the family. So we have a few books that we're working on. Pops has Metro restaurant, restaurant equipment. equipment repair. Pops the man. Yeah. 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 Pops, the man. I knew Pops, when Pops, said, Pops, when Pops no, came in with that hat, I knew he was the man. No, I was no. a little nervous. You know how when you know, you know the OG then came through, you like, oh man. No. It started like with my grand, great grandfather and great grandmother. They didn't have no depression because they had their own land. They passed it on to my grandmother. My grandmother passed, and then her sister took it over. She was the first black owner, Booker Watts nursing home. She had two nursing homes, and then she had a liquor store. My great aunt Geneva was the entrepreneur. They called her boss lady. Like okay. before, there was a boss lady. There was a boss lady. She okay. had a big boat and had a boss lady, right? <laughs> like she's a black woman owning boats. I don't want to get the picture painted like we had a silver spoon in our no, mouth. We we didn't. We We're did. products of hard work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And determination. Yep. She was able to have children, have a dream, move from Indianapolis to Atlanta, fulfill her dreams, but also she made her children her priority. She taught us you don't take no for an answer. Someone tells you no, you keep going. That just means they don't know how. We don't do can't. We don't mm -hmm. do no's. You got your kids growing up. In that type of atmosphere, you're a product of your environment. Can we toast to that? That's right. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Let's toast to that. You about to adopt me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all, I want to go ahead and thank family for having me and for turning up. I need all my friends to come to the middle of the floor. Get up. Baby, that family know nightlife, okay? But one thing about it, I'm gonna stay fit. During the Green Book era, black people did not have access to fitness clubs. But guess what? Now, we owning our own clubs, and we doing it our way. And it's one brother in Atlanta that is revolutionizing workouts, and guess what else he doing? I almost cussed. He changing the game, baby. Welcome to Effect Fitness. 
Welcome, welcome, boo. So what's your name? Man, you got Miss Motivation. Miss Motivation. Hey. We're going to throw you in the deep end of the pool. Okay. And I want you to work at your own pace. My own pace? What's up? You look scared as hell. <laughs> you look nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm real nervous. Working to a fake fitness, but you see what you be a part of, huh? Yeah, that's why I'm nervous. <laughs> man, good, man. No, no take it easy on me, all right? I got you, brother. I think welcome, man. Lie. Welcome. <laughs> Hands down, hands down, Kim. Put uh, your hand on the ground. The hand on the ground? Kim, you count. So you started off in a garage. Two car garage, and I had a townhouse. And I kept getting kicked out of my apartment complex gym trying to sneak and train people. So I started just inviting people. I ain't even had no prices at the point. I said, man, y'all just come work out. We'll figure it out later. And then two clients turned to 50. And then 50 turned to 100, and then it was time to move. And now you got this. And now we got this. And you been here since when? We got here 2017. So we've been going on six years. Being able to open up this black owned business on the blackest street in Atlanta made the most sense to me. Good, Kendall. Good job, Kendall. How are you getting people to get in here and sign up for memberships? Because you know 12% of black people have gym memberships. It's energy, bro. You start thinking about we making working out fun. When you add that music, the energy, not only have we made it fun, we made a way of life. Come Christmas morning, you'll see 500 black people here working out. We're not close. You don't take we do not close. We, we break, but we don't take breaks. I'm about to quit. 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 Atlanta is the place for black businesses. Why do you think that is? The support, man. You got to think about it. People here want to see people do good. And everybody got their own thing going on, so ain't nobody mad because you being successful. If you're going to have bring black people together, you need a community. Yeah. Like, we always searching, ripping and running, trying to go find places to go. No, we got it right here. Press, 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 press. So earlier, one of your people was saying, y'all don't borrow from nobody, y'all yeah. own it. Best thing that ever happened to me was going to try to get help with this and then not getting it. When it comes to a bank, we don't owe a bank. We don't got no loans. Oh. The companies don't have no loans. We don't, all this equipment, we, our own. And okay, now you multi-million. Yeah. Absolutely. They can lay me down here. Down the man's man's back up. Just being here in Atlanta and seeing black businesses, seeing black people thrive, I'm just looking at it and it's showing that we are our ancestors' wildest dreams. When, when you talk about effect fitness and you say Kendrick Lucius or Dooley, I want the name to mean something. When you say the word ancestors, it just it, it chills a little bit. And one thing I like about you is that you turned them cans into cans. Absolutely. People I said like you that. can't do it. I and love it. Like, I, 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 I need more of it. I yeah. like it. I'm gonna be back. Yeah. Can we give it up for everybody on their first day? <laughs> Bring y'all ass back tomorrow. That's it, baby. That's the end of my Green Book journey. The new Green Book Atlanta, generational wealth. My grand, great grandfather and great grandmother, they didn't have no depression because they had their own land. History. The meeting place no, for it, Martin Luther King. Food. The map is macking. Nightlife. Take a sip. Put your phone down. Entrepreneurship. The first black-owned brewery in Georgia. We did it. I'm out. Kendall is out, best friends. This has been one heck of a three-day journey, but I'll do it again.